Hi, I'm Graham Murphy, a product manager here at Tech Rentals. This is a quick introduction to the Polisonics Hydro SX30 kit as supplied by Tech Rentals. We've got the instrument itself here. It's the instrument. We have a, uh, a charger in the kit. Right, you'll plug that in to charge the instrument up. It will actually operate with the charger plugged in, which is useful. We've got uh, these to attach the um, clamps. So these are the clamps. We attach the clamps um, to the pipe. That's uh, we need to hold the um, the, uh, the transducers on. This is a bit of couplant that needs to go under the transducer. These are the cables. Um, we've also got a spanner for these um, clamps, the Python clips. And here are the transducers, the transducers themselves. Ready? I've put the uh, Python clamp around the pipe here. Um, I'll put one of the, um, the fixtures here for holding the transducers in place. Put the second one in place. It's always a bit tricky this because the um, things are often quite hard to hold. Um, now I'm going to just pull this a little bit. Now when you lay this screw down flat it locks in, largely locks in place and now it's just a matter of tightening it up and we can get a really good grip on there. There, they're solidly in place. Now you can use a cable tie on this if you wish. Right, okay, I've taken the transducer out. I put a little bit of couplant. Don't have to put a heap, just a thumbnail's worth or so. I put the first one on. Clamped in place, nice and solidly. Now you don't have to put these at any particular position. Generally you, you'd, you'd put them at uh, nine o'clock and three o'clock but in this case the pipe's a little bit small and I'm trying to show you what's going on. Having connected those I now put the um, just simply get the two cables and connect the two BNC's on the end here. Now we connect the two cables to the um, the instrument. I've put, opened the instrument up they're just simply BNC connectors so we connect them over here. Right now we just simply switch the instrument on we hit the on switch. And the instrument's on and it's booting. Okay, uh, we've got a, a keypad here for entering numbers. Scroll jumps between um, fields and there's an enter key and a backspace. They're the only function keys. And as well as that, we've got these soft keys up the top here. Okay, we uh, need to set the instrument up. I'm going to hit the um, soft key uh, adjacent to the reset there. So if I hit reset, set up flow meter, yes. It's resetting the unit. Now it asks me whether I'm going to auto set up or a manual set up, or well, in this case I'm going to scroll from one field to the other. So I hit the scroll key, I'm now on auto, now I'll push enter. Now I've got to put the pipe internal diameter, in this case it's um, 63 minus 8, which is 55 millimetres internal diameter. So I'm going to put 5, 5, it's already on millimetres here, so I push enter now. Uh, it jumps field and I'll go next. Now we're going to operate in litres per second, we can change these units if we need to. Go next. Now it's setting up various ranges and doing a self-learn. This takes about uh, 15 or 20 seconds. Now the instrument is dual frequency, so it's trying the um, different frequencies and setting up various threshold levels, etc. Now, uh, for example, if I was running a time of flight instrument at the same time, they would interfere with each other. You can only use one instrument at a time. So it yeah, won't self-learn. If there's no flow, you also won't self-learn. So you've got to be careful of that. You make sure if you're doing something like sewage, you've got to make sure it's actually flowing in order for it to do a full learn. Right, learn mode is now complete. And there's our flow. Now you might notice that the, um, the, the accumulated flow is in gallons here but there's our flow in litres per second, so it's 1.36. Now we can change this, um, this figure here uh, under the setup menu. So I just need to go to setup, and I need to go to config, um, wrong bit there, I go next part of the menu, next part of the menu, and there it is, that's set up at the moment, the US gallons. Now I can scroll around 
until I get to, um, for example, liters. Um, now I put push enter on that and I've got it selected. So now I can hit flow and I come back and there's my accumulated flow in liters. Now, difficulty with this meter is the fact that are we, is this a good reading? Can we believe it? Well, this is how we determine that. We've got to uh, take out the manual and on this page of the manual, you'll notice there's a table with signal quality versus signal strength, giving a, an area here. Now, in this case, we've got a 96% signal strength, 4.3 signal quality. We look on our table here, signal strength right up the end here, signal quality 4.3 up here, so we're in the good range. So we can believe it. Now, the other test we've got to make, you'll notice there's an FFT button. Now, when we hit that, that gives our flow profile. Now that's the current flow profile that we're getting. Now you can see there's a bit of raggedness here. What we're trying to get with this, again we turn to the manual, what we're trying to get is a nice looking bell curve shape rather than something like this. And these are all bad ones. You know, see this, there's interference here and you, etc. Now you see fairly quickly whether or not you're getting a reasonable sort of shape. Now this is coming and going, but it's not too bad. So that's, a, that's our Doppler flow there. Uh, that's our actual flow profile. Um, so you can actually see where you've got chaotic flow. It's pretty good, really. So we're quite happy with that. Good signal quality, quite good signal, that's quite good signal quality and, and really good signal strength. Signal quality is the fact that this isn't particularly smooth. We go back to our flow so we can believe it. So this is a good flow measurement. This is a very easy to use instrument, very quick to set up. Um, you can actually hand hold the transducers on a pipe if you wish. Once you've got used to the uh, highly repeatable uh, results and once you've got used to using it, you can, you can race around checking measurements very quickly. It's a great little instrument. Hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments field. You can click the subscribe button if you wish to subscribe to our channel. And also, if you check the description, there's uh, various links to other TR media where we have useful links coming through. Thanks for watching.